All right, grab your Bibles if you will. Turn to the book of 2 Corinthians in, in chapter number 7, if you would, please. Uh, I'm not going to go back to, verse, uh, back to verse number 1 and try to walk myself back down to verse number 8. We've already done that. If you need uh, a little bit of, of um, a time, if you get a chance, go back to verse to the, uh, uh, the video of Sunday, last week's of Sunday school, if you will. Uh, but verse number 8 is going to refer to as we're going to go ahead and take a look at. Uh, the Apostle Paul is... Uh, uh, kind of worried, if you will, to some degree about the idea that first of all, the churches in Asia had just simply, in other words, just turned their, themselves away from him. Matter of fact, in other words, it's interesting to find out the idea that uh, the Bible makes a statement that his first answer, he said, no man stood with me. He said, there was all men forsook me. Uh, I guarantee you there was a great falling away even in his day. And here's where it is, he's trying to work over with this church at Corinth. And as it is, he does this, he's Writing, if you will, a bold letter, 1 Corinthians, if you will. And as it is that he does this, notice, if you will, verse 8, he says, But though I made you sorry with a letter, I, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. I mean, it crushed them because I guarantee you, you read the verse, the biggest part of them. Uh, you read the biggest part of the will of the first Corinthians, and I guarantee you just chapter after chapter after chapter, it is nothing but a reproof, a rebuke, an exhortion, uh, and, and exhorting, if you will, and all, all the suffering and doctrine. He knows the reason is for a time is going to come. They're not going to endure sound doctrine, but they're going to hear right. themselves teachers having itching ears. So he's got to he's got to take care of business regardless. And that's the thing, same thing over for the preacher. He's got to take care of business. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to be preaching the 11 o'clock service. I'm going to talk about the idea that the gospel essentially, basically, is not being preached in the verse at least nine. And I'll, I'll deal with the verse, the uh, statistics and what have it. About nine different of the largest churches in America, the gospel is not found. It's simply the Sunday that's not found. So the Apostle Paul has got to take care of business regardless. He's going to go ahead and tell them. He made the statement to the Galatians. He said, Have I become your enemy? Even though he said simply because I tell you the truth. Right. And that's the idea. This is the risk sometimes that you run. But folks, I don't know about you. you you've got to, you need to preach this thing. That's all there is to it. Now, here's what it is we deal with. Now, the biggest thing of it is, because you can go back into chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians, you can talk about the idea the Apostle Paul is dealing with, in other words, the thought about the verse of that somebody that needed to be disciplined. And there's where it is we find, if you will, in the book of 1 Corinthians, in chapter number 5. That's what we're going to focus on. That's what we focused on uh, last week when we went so far, went to this good certain place, if you will, talking about the verse of that this individual, if you will, that is, um, is commonly reported, in other words, uh, it's reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. That's what they're dealing with here. What's interesting is this church wouldn't take care of it. Right. They wouldn't deal with it. I mean, it's not like, in other words, it was hidden off in a corner someplace as far as that goes. Right. Apparently, in other words, everybody knew about it. Uh, verse number two just baffles me. It says, and ye are puffed up. Why? I have no idea. He said well, you should be mourning over this, the one that, has, that he might be taken away from among you. I mean, he immediately nails down the idea that this individual needs to be thrown out of this church. Yeah, that's right. And we're going to go on to see the words of the idea. He minces no words, if you will. He makes sure that there was they understand the importance of this whole thing. He said in verse 3, for barely as absent in the body, the present spirit, I have judged already as though. Uh, I were present concerning him that done, that, that, that done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you're gathered together in my spirit with the power of, of our Lord Jesus, this guy is all like, like a business meeting. Mm -hmm. The idea, in other words, whenever you guys are all gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, he said to deliver such a one of the Satan for the destruction of the flesh. This is where we were at last week. He said that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Just going to touch, if you will, the first part of that. To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. We already talked about the idea about the words, this destruction of the flesh is the idea, certainly the idea that there somebody is given over to fornication, something like that, probably get some sexual transmitted disease. In other words, it's probably rampant in other words, that day. Matter of fact, you can say one of the seeds was ended up having a, um, um, well, sexual transmitted disease. Uh, what's the bad one? Uh, AIDS? No, no, no. Today, uh, back then, back then, they would have known Probably about syphilis. it. Syphilis. Syphilis, yeah. Uh, Gonorrhea. Herpes. 
syphilis, I think, something like that. But one of the, one of the Caesars doesn't feed them alive in that situation as far as that goes. So there's what it is. So that's the idea about the the idea about the destruction of the flesh. That's one thing. But also the destruction of the flesh is the idea about the emotional part, if you will. The word flesh there is talking about the emotions, if you will. And that's where it is we made the statement, the idea about when somebody backslid, in other words, if you'll treat them rightfully and properly, like the words the church should, when they're just blatant and they're sin and what have you on that line, not trying to mamby pamby around with them, yeah. there's where it is, it'll work on them emotionally to the point that I guarantee you, in other words, they can get it in pretty bad shape. A classic example, if you will, in other words, Saul, in other words, is wrong with God. You do realize, you want to talk about paranoia, you want to talk about, in other words, the idea that he, right. he had got to the point where, in other words, it is, that he was so bad off that he almost, he ended up, in other words, uh, calling his son some of those most ungodliest names that you could ever imagine, and turn around, in other words, and threw a spear at him because he thinks that he was sided up with David. Right. I mean, he knows emotionally he was erupted. Right. But you know, you realize the idea because of his, because of, in other words, his treatment of David, if you will, as far as that goes, that sin. You do realize there's where it is. I mean, you know, he was completely out of whack. Emotionally, he was just being destroyed. Then he got to the point, if you will, the idea he's chasing him around for no reason, trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's some bad wrong with somebody like that that persecutes somebody, ain't doing nothing other right. against you along right. the line. Then in turn, if you will, and, 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 and God sat there in the middle of this whole thing, tried to show him that they wouldn't try to kill him or anything else, had several chances and didn't do so. And it's still the words he's just went back and forth and back and forth. Oh, I've, I've sinned, I've erred, you played the fool, and all this good stuff and what have you. He's just going back and forth. Then he got to the point of where he just kept on and kept on. Then all of a sudden he emotionally gets so whacked out the because he can't get a hold of God. What does he do? He ends up going to a witch. Right. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beat this, I really am not. To the point, in other words, what does he end up doing? So emotionally erupted, he ends up killing himself. Mm -hmm. Now, come on. I mean, uh, the, the Judas is exactly the same kind of situation. Right. Emotionally, he can't handle it. Right. Right. Emotionally, he's handed over to Satan. Right. Say, so who handed him over to Satan? Uh, well, I think the Lord did. Yeah. So just in case, in other words, you're wondering, you realize the Lord allowed Satan to enter into his heart. If somebody ever reads the Bible, mm -hmm. they'll realize that's exactly the verse what is going to happen. Right. There's just simply just no getting around that. As a matter of fact, yeah, yeah. Same situation with Peter. We act like, and oh, I, yeah, by the way, I want to make sure that the words that somebody can realize you can't get back right with God. Yes. Yeah. You're mostly sure that can. Peter, my friend, emotionally erupted because he's actually like a goat, if you will. He's cussing, lying, and denying, weeping bitterly because it is he just denies the Lord, lies about him, if you will, cusses and carries on on that line. Is he emotionally? The Bible says the words constantly, they were the words weeping bitterly. That's what right. the Bible says. Does he turn around and get him back right? Yes, he knows for sure. Yes. Does. does Judas know? But you know what? That's Judas' fault and nobody else's. Right. Yeah. So, right. So, and you say, well, what do you say about the idea about the words? You realize it says Satan. The Lord says this. Satan had desired. He said to you like we, right? He don't go ahead and let like this. If you, I got to go back to the idea. That's exactly what the Lord will do. So the idea about Paul doing this, the Lord did this. Come on, right. somebody, somebody needs to understand what we're talking about here. And this is exactly what needs to be done in church discipline. In other words, even in a modern day situation. Yes. Whenever somebody's living in sin openly, publicly, boldly, and if you will, unashamedly, it needs to be taken care of by the church, or otherwise you're going to find out exactly what happens. And the reason is because these people are going to go to hell, just in right. case you're wondering about that. He said that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. He said, well, don't you believe this is kind of something a little bit strange, kind of out of the ordinary? Oh, no, 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 not at all. As a matter of fact, one of the references that there is here right here, the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 20 talks about of whom is Hymenaeus, and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan. There it is. He's done it again. He's doing it again. And Paul, the Apostle Paul realizes this. If something isn't done about this thing, this is just going to continue. It's just going to keep getting worse. It's going to end up stinking, ruining, in other words, the church or wherever these individuals are at. I delivered them unto Satan that they might learn not to, what now? Blasphemy. Uh, is this is this in line with the, the verse that talks about rebuking before all that all may fear? Mm -hmm. Is yeah. this the same concept? Right. As, yeah. And see, that's the idea. Uh, we're, we're getting to the point where the words is, we don't want to enact church discipline. Now, I don't think you ought to do it in other words just every time you turn around. I went to a church many, many years ago. 
before it is that I started, that was the Free Will Baptist. That there was every time it is that I ever went there, they would sit there and others and have people stand up and confess what they'd done that week and ask for an apology and had to be voted on whether the church is going to uh, uh, gonna, gonna end up uh, uh, accepting their apology or not. Yeah, I think two different times I think I went there and they did that. I thought, you know what? This is not the way you handle this situation by right. a stretch of the imagination as far as that goes. But listen, if there's somebody like living in sin, it needs to be taken care of. There's no getting around it. Mm -hmm. And so the idea, and as a matter of fact, the verse there is the church, it needs to sit in other words, come together, all that kind of, with one mile on a cord, that kind of situation. If you have not, I guarantee you, it will. It'll, it'll permeate the church. That they might learn not to blaspheme. See, church discipline has got a point to it. Yes, it does. You know what the point is? Is getting them back right with God because they're going to die and go to hell. That's the point that numbers is apparently nobody understands. They think if we cover it up, and listen, you cover up your sins, you're not going to prosper. That's right. Yeah. So confess it and forsake it then, those are the ones going to end up obtaining mercy. Yes. And so that's the idea. And when the Apostle Paul is challenging, if you will, the idea, does that look like up there? Yeah. Uh, the Apostle Paul is challenging, in other words, the uh, Corinthian church to take care of this situation. This is where it made them sorry. They're thinking to themselves, oh my goodness, we're going to have to, we're going to have to take care of something like this in a business meeting. Yeah, that's what the point of it is. Taking care of stuff in a business meeting is the idea of taking care of this thing in order so that the people, and we're going to get a little bit further into this thing, that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. He said, your glory is not good. He said, no, you're not that a little leaven. What does it do? It leaven the whole lump. All that means is it's simply the thought, the idea, if you will, Simply the idea of other words, if you let this thing, if you let this thing go on, just a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Right. It don't take much. Mm -hmm. It don't take much at all. Right. It means the idea that if you're not careful, other words, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't take nip that thing in the bud, I guarantee you, it'll grow. Yeah. Poor my friend, you talk about stumbling block, you ain't never seen like in your ever loving life, I guarantee you. Right. You just simply just go get it around that. Now, verse 7 and what have you, the, the Apostle Paul just starts preaching the gospel, which that's fine in the words. He just, he's just dropping to the idea about the Christ is our Passover and the unleavened uh, part of the Passover. Uh, let us keep the feast in the birth that, that he said. Now, he goes to go to verse 9, but cut to the chase. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to keep company with what now? Fornicators. With fornicators. Now, fornicators, if you will, is the idea. It's those it is that are given to any kind of sexual trafficking. Right. Any kind. I don't care what kind it is. We're talking about the idea about pornography and such one area on that line. And the church, if you will, as a whole, takes a very, very slight light and view, if you will, of, of, uh, of pornography as far as I'm, I'm concerned. What I've heard and what happened on that line, I've heard some of those. Uh, Paul White, which that, that really bothers me that, that, that Trump, in other words, thinks she's wonderful and great. Paul White and her husband actually used the words pornography, in other words, for an enhancement for their, for their marriage and what have you. How many know this is sick puppies that have folks? Yeah. This yeah. is sick puppies out there. They're just simply just no getting around that. Uh, uh, by the way, if you, just in case you don't believe that, go on YouTube for Paula White and the version of pornography and her husband. So you can find it right quick. I, I, I actually watched the video myself of where they admitted it, if you will. She was embarrassed. He wasn't. Yeah. So anyway, that, she's an advisor to Trump. Whatever. Okay, so. But then I got to go back to the idea. He said... Not to keep in the company with fornicators. Anybody, anybody my friend that's that around any kind of sexual trafficking. By the way, I, I'm not I'm not a fan of uh, public displays of, afflect, of affection, uh, affliction, uh, <laughs> that either. Uh, but really, but what, just like there was a camp, we've had that verse several times. Some folks in the words of this is just hugging and mugging and sitting on one another's lap while they're on that line. I don't know about you, but that that doesn't need to. That, that nonsense doesn't need to go on. Right. That just simply, if you will, my friend, started the words with somebody else just a little bit younger, a little bit older, or whatever else on that line. And out of that little bit 11 and 11, no. the whole lot, uh, everybody. Um, the, the video that you were talking about on YouTube, that's just to see where they admitted it, correct? They admitted it, where they admitted it at, yeah. The idea of Paul White and her husband were standing there in the words, and they actually bring the point up about the pornography, yes. That's the idea. I, I hope I clarified that. That's good. I, I appreciate that. Like that. And since it's just us, us guys, if you want to kick that baby, uh, kick that arrow, and we can do that. All right. Since ain't nobody here, the words it's freezing. 
<laughs> so anyway, so take a look, he says, now, he says, in other words, yet not altogether the fornicators of this world, or the covetous, or extortioners, or the idolaters, for then you must need to go out of the world. He says, you're not going to get away from them. He said, don't misunderstand me. Right. You're not going to get away from them. You're going to have to minister to them. You need to get them right with God. You need to get them straightened out, and what have you. You're, you're, you'd have to go out of the world. You just simply have to go out of the world in order to get away from these individuals because they're all over the place. He said, but number verse number 11, he says, but now I have written unto you not to keep company. Now, here we go. Isn't this interesting? I did all that time, if you will, on separation. No. Okay? Mm -hmm. the all on separation. I mean, I'm telling you, we did a long, long deal on separation. What, what are we doing? We're right back to it again. It's right back to it again, if you will. But I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother, a brother be a fornicator or covetous. Let me stop right there. Any, it says, if any man be, is called a brother. I mean, you, know, you need to be careful about who you call brother That's right. and who you yeah. call sister. I don't know about you, but we've got people, if you will, my friend, that are being called brother and sister and whatever on that line, and they're no more brother and sister than nothing. That's right. By no stretch of the imagination, what you're doing, in case you don't know that, you're sitting there, you're giving them a false sense of confidence that they're all right, or assurance, if you will, that they're all right with God, because you're the one calling them brother. You're the one calling them sister. Right. You say, well, what do you do in the case of You can call them sir. You can call them ma'am. You can call them whatever you want to call them, but don't you be calling them brother and sister when they're not living like they're supposed to be. Right? No stretch of imagination. You're doing more damage numbers than you could ever imagine calling somebody a brother or sister when they're not living like they're supposed to, regardless of whether they ever have been one or not. Right. Now, I think that's clear, the idea. Now, you say, well, why, how long do you say that? Well, do you remember, does anybody remember when the Lord Jesus Christ raised from the dead? He said, go tell my disciples and Peter. And Peter. That's interesting. Why in the world on earth did he separate that situation? You want to know why? Because apparently Peter wasn't a disciple any longer. That's right. He was not. He's cussing. He's lying. He's denying. And what had you on that line? Come on. Yeah. Somebody, somebody needs to get honest about this situation. And this is what the Apostle Paul is dealing with here. If you're a questioning somebody's Christianity or them being a brother and sister, don't call them that. You don't have to. Right. Not by no stretch of the imagination, you don't have to. How do you, um, because it, a lot of people in their own mind, they think that they're right with the Lord. So how do you go about that if you know clearly, just, just, uh, you don't, you just call them sir or ma'am? Yeah, yeah. Just let them know in the words that you, that you're not going to address them that way. You're not going to give them the no false confidence by no stretch of imagination. And then try to somehow or another work around to the idea in the words you'll be able to deal with it if at all possible. Bible talks about the idea to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That means the idea, deal with it. Deal with a situation like that. And you know, I've already heard that you have. You've talked to guys and birds who are supposed to be Christian. You sit there and say, man, you're cussing and you're doing this and stuff like that. See, that's what I'm saying. Hey, I think you've got to do it. The birds, you got to give an answer to every man with a, with a, with a, with a, a with meekness and fear. you got to give an answer to every man that asks you an answer for the answer that lies within you with meekness and fear. Be careful, Lord, how it is that you go about it. I think seriously, that's important. But let's see if any man that's called a brother be a fornicator. He said, or, or covetous. That means the idea that this is where, and by the way, in America, you realize covetousness is covered up quite a bit. Right. Most people, the idea about covetousness, nobody ever preaches on covetousness. Nobody teaches on it. Nobody ever deals with it in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And the reason is because we're sitting in fat cat America, where uh, that's where a lot of Christians are at, if you will, a ton of them. And that's why the word covetous is constantly in there. You say, well, what, what is covetousness? It's the idea I gotta have. I gotta have, I gotta have, I gotta have this, I gotta have that, I want this new toy, I want this new this, I want this new that, I want my house all fixed up and wonderful and great stuff on that line. It's fine. I find it interesting in the words you say, well, 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 well what 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 others guys just bless them and they're able to be able to have stuff on that line. Well, here's how I, I, I measure that right quick. Uh, I, I know of individuals, if you will, that's got everything that heart to wish for themselves personally and their family, if you will, to the point, in other words, the idea that a king, in other words, would look, if you will, with covetousness on their situation of a day gone, a kingdom of a day gone by, if you will, and then turn around, in other words, and they don't do nothing for God. 
Right. They don't know their students, nothing with their talents. Mm -hmm. They don't do nothing but walk in and walk out in the words of the church like that. But in other words, they got fine cars and just, I just go on and on and on and different things. This, other words, this, they've got and their families and everything else going on that line. Not that I'm grudging them that. Because I think God, in other words, uh, can will bless in other words and individuals. Just simply, there's no getting around that. But the idea is, in other words, that they don't do a thing in the words for the church. I got a problem with that. Right. Because you do realize covetousness where will take away in other words from the things of God. That's the idea of what covetousness in other words will do. The idea about having things is you have no business having. By the way, if you don't, if you don't, if you didn't get it right, you're going to have to give it back. back. That's yes. a word like that. When Achan, if you will, sat there and saw the words that wedged, saw the words of shekels, the silver, and that shirt, you do realize the words that he was covetous. He's ready to come right. on. He had no business, if you will, my friend, with those things. The Lord sat there and said, I stuff is all dedicated to me, and what you're doing is you're robbing me. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's the idea. We say, well, what's up? I pay my tithes and I pay the words of my offerings and whatever on that line. God just blessed me. That's good. Mm -hmm. You probably got the gift of giving. Mm -hmm. So there Keep it is. Just, just, just work on that, if you will. But that's something you need to do in the words inside the church. Church, if you will. In other words, the gift of giving. In words, and to be able to minister to folks in the words in ways that the idea of Matthew chapter 25, verse 35, the idea about the hunger and about the hospitality and about the habit and about the who's got also. Remember we talked about that. Now go. He said covetous or idolatry. And the idea, this is, this is the idea about verse counting the verse Christians, people that are counting people that are clearly idolaters. They got idols all over the place, and we're just not talking about just Catholics. See, we're talking about the words of Protestants, if you will, and the words that have icons and stuff like that, and pictures and and and, and idols and just all kind all kinds of stuff all like uh, like those. It says, or a railer that somebody that just just goes off. In other words, on any and everything on a regular basis. In other words, you can't even talk to them, can't even work with them, can't even do with them, can't even deal with them. They're just railing on anybody, everybody. Uh, and so, or, or a drunkard, and that's the idea. We'll come back to the idea. Watch my video, if you would, on the idea that uh, buzz living drunk. is drunk living. Go on, go on over to our YouTube channel and look that one up right quick. We'll show you about, about being a drunkard right quick. It's clear in the, of the Bible. Anybody that's given the social drinking, you're a drunkard, just in case yeah. you're wondering. Or an extortion. And an extortioner is somebody that, in other words, that tries to use uh, some kind of situation. So, in other words, it is that they can uh, uh, get you to do something. It is, my friend, that, that yeah, you had no business doing or something along that line or compromising or something along that line. It's like the idea you can't see your grandkids. In other words, as far as that goes, unless you do this, don't do this, do that, and stuff along that line. Extortioners. Uh, there's, of course, there's extortioners that never try to get money out of people, stuff along that line. But I'm trying to bring it into a trying to bring it into a, a context so people would understand the idea of the words. Well, if you don't, uh, especially the words in a divorce situation, there's where his extortion goes on on a regular basis. So right. I can go on. It's the way he says, with such a one, no, not the evil. What does that mean? Right. No, don't eat with them. Well, see, sometimes you need to be very, very careful about when you have a meal with somebody that's supposed to be a brother, yet the numbers they're living in sin. If you're not careful, that meal, that social meal, if you will, can be the idea of a, of a sign of approval. You say, you tell me I can't eat with my family or I can't eat with my friends and stuff like that or they're living in sin. Oh, you can I don't have a problem with that, but you need to make sure it is made no clear cut beyond a shadow of a doubt as far as you're concerned that you're that they're as lost as a goose in a snowstorm. It's the idea that they are not right with God. You can go ahead and eat with them all you want to, but they simply need to know the idea <laughs> that in other words, that you don't believe they're right with God. Right. Yes. So that so would you have to tell them that before you eat a meal with oh, them? Oh yeah, yeah, they need to know this ahead of time, in other words, before you give us. Otherwise, if you're not careful. They're going to sit there and say, the idea, we'll sit down having a meal. Because we don't understand what a meal means, in other words, in the context, in the words, of a first century mindset. Right. That's acceptance, if you will. It's fellowship. It's acceptance of what have you. So this is what you have to be very, very careful with. There's just simply just no getting around that as far as that goes. So that's the idea. You say, well, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go through the uh, I can get bogged down here. I really can't. Now, he says, well, what, a, what, a, what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within. See, I don't know about you, but 
Uh, we're missing something also in the idea of our church covenant. That church covenant, I'm going to bring that thing out on a regular basis. On the idea about works, uh, about the idea about you promised, you made a covenant. Right. You with this church, when you joined it, as far as that goes, the idea that the words that somebody can look upon your life, that the words that you obey them, that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves to them, if you will, so that the words they can watch for your. Uh, so. Your soul, but then the, in, in, in our, uh, our covenant says, and watch for their uh, oh, happiness and testimony. Their testimony, I believe, it is. Uh, there's not making another word, but happiness. testimony is close enough. It says happiness. Okay, that's okay. Uh, but, but reputation, oh, that's yeah. what it is. Reputation. You want to hang it on that line. And so, and also, you're supposed to be taking the words of proof with meekness. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, of spiritual, if you will. Of maturity. I, I'm bothered by people, my friend, that you can't sit there and try to talk to them about a need that they got in their life as far as that goes without them getting huffy. I mean, you know, you're, you're my leg. Whenever other words, you're not going to do that covenant, you ought to tell somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, ought, you ought to tell somebody. Mm -hmm. Say, you know what? That covenant thing won't have you. I'm not going to do that no more. I don't want to be a member any longer. I'm not going to abide by that. Otherwise, what you are, you're a covenant breaker. Right. And that, yeah, I guarantee you, in other words, you'll split hell wide open, being a covenant breaker also. That's Romans chapter 1, also 2 Timothy chapter 3, if you will, in the context of those verses, all about four or five verses, if you will. Covenant breaker. Mm -hmm. Truce breaker, if you will. So I just thought, he says, do not ye judge them that are within. That means the idea of we're supposed to be taking care of one another. We're supposed to be watching over one another. Right. We're supposed to be watching one another's reputation. So, somebody, I know people get mad at me because of this, and I bring all this stuff up out of Facebook and what have you on that line. But you guys are not getting it. That's right. You know what it is that I'm doing? I'm trying, in other words, to make sure it is you don't ruin your reputation. That's, right. Right. That's why I bring up, in other words, these people that have that have uh, that are supposed to be Christians, yeah. if you will, and they're 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 posting stuff with with uh, uh, cussing. And liking junk that I guarantee you that has no business. And by the way, just in case you were wondering, uh, I, this is not my judgment. I've gotten over several that is when I show these videos to, not very many, because I don't want people seeing this nonsense. I really don't. So the ones that is not, uh, matter of fact, most of the guys that are, well, most of the guys, several guys that are here right now, I've showed some of these videos. Now, guys, so that the camera can hear it, the stuff that is that I've shown you here just lately, if you will, of preachers that have left this church, that have gone out there and begin to start to numbers, ruin their testimony and their uh, reputation. Reputation, what have you? The stuff it is that you've seen, in other words, is it ungodly or not? Yes. yes. Okay, that's one, two, three, four. In other words, guys, plus myself, we're establishing every word in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And if you'd like to see whether what we're talking about is true or not, Glad to show you also. Right. The idea, my friend, do not ye judge them that are within. supposed to be within. Right. That will whatever happen to judge, not unless you be judged. You're going to be judged anyway. Right? <laughs> so right. you go right ahead. Let's talk about the idea of you judging the idea that there was somebody's got a little sawdust in their eye and you got a four by four stuck in yours. Right. That's the context of that. Right. That you ain't got no business judging somebody right. as far as that goes. There's just simply just no getting around that. Somebody ought to say amen. That's the idea. Do not ye judge them that are within. within. See, that's the context. That's the idea. And you say, well, I don't think I don't know if I like that or not. Well, then don't join the church then. No. Just don't join. But you realize the idea. This is biblical. The idea about being part of a local church is biblical, yes. Within means part of the church family, correct? I'm sorry? The word within means part of the church family. Yes, right. Uh, yeah. yeah talking about what we have within. Yeah, because he's going to go in just a minute for those that are without. Just a minute. We'll, we'll do that in just a minute. Uh, but anyway, that's the idea. So, and, and that's the key to what it is we're talking about. We're talking about the idea of the words. I do that on a regular basis because I don't want, because there, first of all, some of the folks in Israel are supposed to be Christians out there. Uh, the, what it is, is they, were, they have been corrupted. Right. Yes. Right. They most assuredly have. They've been corrupted, and now all they're doing is they're just corrupting other people. Right. That's just simply all that is. 
I don't know about you, but there's the people that are supposed to be uh, Christians and stuff along that line. Uh, when you go to Hawaii, they'll come back showing me some, some video, in other words, of uh, some women uh, uh, hula dancing and what have you like that. I don't care about watching that nonsense. Amen. But also, I don't want to see your daughter, in other words, I don't want to see her thighs either. That's right. I, I just simply, I just simply just do not. Right. It's crazy. Right. And this, this foolish jesting, of course, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, in other words, my message is way ahead. This foolish jesting, as far as I go, he said, well, foolish jesting is no big deal. Excuse me, you're not going to go to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. We're not going to go to the kingdom of God. Right. And foolishness, my friend, the Bible says that the very, the very thought of foolishness is sin. This right. is the idea of what we're talking about here. This is crazy. Uh, I've got this one video that I showed with Paul, for a matter of fact, in other words, you see yes, that? Yes. And what, what it was was this guy who was doing this little coin trick as far as that goes. When he does the coin trick, he does something really kind of filthy at the end of the whole thing mm -hmm. like that. And everybody start, everybody thinks it's funny as far as that goes. Posted this thing out there, this, this effeminate individual, uh, and, and turned to post that thing like that. And then all of a sudden, I look at the words and go, who is it like? You know, one of the person that like that? And the young preacher that was that left this church years ago as far as right. like that. Are you kidding me? Right. This is what we're talking about here. Judging those that are within. And then verse 13, in other words, we kind of wrap this thing up. He says, but them that are without, God, God judges. Right. He said, in other words, those that is, in other words, that don't claim to be Christian, God's going to judge them. That's right. Simple as that. He said, therefore, notice if you will, verse 13, therefore put away from among yourselves that, what's it called? Wicked person. Right. This is an individual that's called a Christian, counted as one, called one, right. counted as a Christian at one time, called one, if you will. Now it says, you need to get that person out. You need to kick them out of here. Right. What you're doing is, in other words, you're letting them think of themselves that they're all right with God. I mean, you know, that is never the thing to do in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Yeah. Right. You should never, never get anybody any kind of false security. In other words, if they're all right with God, when they live in a clear cut, out and out, double grade day sin. He said that both of us, if you will, it calls them a wicked person. Right. And by the way, a wicked boy, you say, well, I want to do somebody like that. It's wicked. Yeah. Did you know being unforgiving? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 that you're a wicked person if, yeah. you're, un if you're unforgiving. Now, I can do this all day long. I most assuredly can, but I'm just... I'm just trying to show you what the idea is. Now, now, you imagine, in other words, the Apostle Paul is reproving, rebuking, exhorting with all long-suffering and doctrine here. And you do realize the idea, this could hair live a whole lot of people, and it did. Right. right. I mean, that's when we go back to our context in 2 Corinthians chapter number 7. These people, man, were made sorry. Because not just in this sense, not just in this context, if you will, not just this, but in other words, the biggest part of the biggest part of 1 Corinthians, if you will, is a, is a rebuke. Yeah. If you don't think so, just do a quick chapter study right quick. You don't have to read it. Well, you ought to read it as far as that goes. Just do a quick perusal, if you will. You realize chapter 1 talks about the idea. He said there's a bunch of divisions among you. Right. Matter of fact, you're sitting there saying, I'm a Paul. I'm a Apollos. I'm, I'm glad I didn't baptize none of you except for, in other words, the household of Stephanas. And what hand he said, in other words, you guys are getting the point in other words where it is that you're Thinking the words you got here, you're carnal. Chapter chapter three talks about carnality. Five, five this is five right here. Six talks about the idea about the words, the unrighteous stuff. Now, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go through the whole thing. But folks, I mean, that was the idea. They needed a rebuke. Amen. Yeah. They needed a rebuke. And by the way, that's a part of the gospel. Yeah, it is. I guarantee you, words, this is where churches that won't preach the gospel and hang along that line, they're nothing but social clubs. They are. They're nothing but help, just self-help centers. Mm -hmm. That's all it is that they are. A bunch of motivational, mush-mouth ministers. That's all the words they are. The, the mindless mantra of uh, the most mindless mantras that can be imagined. So anyway, there we go. Okay, now, let's go. Let's go back if you will. Now, don't have a whole lot of time to go back over where it is. Uh, uh, we, uh, he said, though, he, he talked about the idea that I made you sorry in the letter. He said, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to, what does it say? Salvation. Salvation. I, I find it interesting, I really do, when he talks about godly sorrow worketh repentance 
to salvation, not to be repented of. I may have that was the idea that there was, this is what the verse needs to be worked on. Yeah. When all of a sudden you've got problems in your church, you know what's needed? It's a godly sorrow. Right. Of the idea of, of godly sorrow that works repentance to salvation. And that was the idea that when, when folks of ours are living in sin in some way, shape, form, or fashion, by the way, this generalized sin, mm -hmm. you can throw that word sin out all you want to. You're not preaching against it. You can't say anything yet. Mm -hmm. Say, well, what do you mean you can't say anything? Most people don't know what sin is. Right. They won't explain it. They won't illustrate it. When right. I talk about the idea about fornication, I won't cut to the chase right quick. I want that nobody thinks for a second that pornography is not clear cut that was the idea about fornication. That's right. What do they mean godly sorrow? Why is it godly sorrow? Because notice the next phrase, but the sorrow of this world. See, there's two kinds of sorrow. There's a godly one and a worldly one. The worldly one, if you will, the idea is I'm sorry I got caught. I'm sorry this is hurting me. Yeah. I'm sorry that this is hurting uh, my finances. I'm sorry that this is hurting right. my reputation. I'm embarrassed. And what have you. That's worldly sorrow. Godly sorrow, well, we're going to get to that in just a minute. That's where I'm kind of dragging my feet just a little bit in the verse of so as we can get, the, I, I may mean, step into it. But in other words, yeah, this godly sorrow, work of repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, the idea. In other words, now, once this, you start this repentance and what have you, don't stop it. Right. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people come up short of the verse of the repentance. Can I give you, can I give you somebody? Yeah. Judas. Mm -hmm. He came up short in his repentance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Sure. Yeah. You say, what makes you think he came up short? Read the, read the text. It said, as soon as it is that he realized that he had sinned against the innocent blood, what did he do? He, he immediately, my friend, turned around. He grabbed that money up. Mm -hmm. He took it right back to those chief priests and elders and what have you and said, here, yes, this is wrong. Yeah. This is wrong. And I betrayed the innocent blood and I want to get this thing turned yeah. around. Mm -hmm. They said, that's your problem. Right. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, that's pretty bad, in other words, when somebody realizes they're wrong with God, yeah. and he's supposed to be religious, and then we'll help them get right with God Amen. somehow or another. That's, right. that's your problem. And the Bible says clearly, he took that money, what did he do? Keep it? No. no, no, no. He threw it down, and it danced and jingled, if you will, that silver did, all across that temple floor, or wherever it is, and they have that, in that judgment hall, or whatever else on that line. He said, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. Yeah. He said, man, that sounds pretty good. It most surely does. Problem is when he walked out of there. Right. When he walked out of there, this is when his repentance, if you will, listen to me very carefully. This is when that repentance didn't go all the way. Yeah. It just simply didn't go far enough. Sure. You say, well, what in the world of worship is he have done? Well, he needed to ask himself the question. First of all, he needed to get right with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now he had embarrassed himself so bad. And by the way, embarrassment, if you will, is a big factor in the idea about sin yeah. and right. sorrow. And Repentance and such and what have you. There's a lot of people that have repented, uh, that have, have thought they've repented simply because they got away from somebody, got away from situ some situation, ran from it, didn't work with it, didn't do with it, didn't deal with it. Mm -hmm. They think that's repentance. No, it's not. It's not. Not at all. Did, listen to me very carefully, listen to me very, listen to me very carefully, did, did Judas take care of things with him and the Lord? And the answer is, no, he didn't. No. Now, you do realize, as far as I'm concerned, that Judas also, if you will, sinned against the words of the disciples also. He was, if you will, a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. He sat there, in other words, and started, in other words, the thing in Acts chapter 12. I mean, John chapter 12, where it is, in other words, that lady had the anointed the body of the Lord. He yeah. said, why is this waste? And there's where he stirred those disciples up as far as that goes. And when he stirred them up, there's where it is. He got them all flustered, if you will, about the idea about a waste and such and whatever. I think he had, he, I think he, I think he, I think he, I think he, he needed to apologize to the, uh, to the disciples also. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. They were not clear in this whole thing by no stretch of the imagination. Because every time they turn around, they're all arguing about who's the greatest in the kingdom of God. Right. That also makes it a little bit hard to come back also. Yeah. That's why church members, you need to make it easy on somebody to come back. Because I guarantee you, there were some people in the words they ever came back in order to try to try to in words, repent or try to confess in the words and try to get things right with individuals and say, well, that just proves it is in the words that you certainly wasn't one of the greatest in the kingdom. I mean, you know, people don't need to listen to that nonsense. Amen. That's right. 
So one of the reasons is the idea, how about the idea that there was, maybe he wouldn't have had a problem where he was getting back right to the Lord, but the idea about getting right back to those disciples, he said, you know what, I'm not going to put myself through that. Right. And somewhere along the line, the devil has got the ability to get you to think only to a certain place, to a certain degree. Yeah. And there's where it is immediately. Why it is that he thought committing suicide was going to be an answer to this situation? Right. See, there sure it is, he came up short in his Repent. repentance. Now, came up short. And what happened was, there was a godly sorrow that was working repentance to salvation. But he turned around and he repented of it, though. Yes. Is the only difference between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow uh, what comes out of it then? Or, Finally and ultimately. Yeah. Yeah, because... One is salvation, the other one's death. Sure. That's what I said. Right. No getting around that. And how that thing turned towards in that situation, I'm not sure exactly. I'm not that smart. Mm -hmm. But I know words it didn't head in the right direction. Yeah. Right. And all they had to have done. Do you think the Lord would have forgiven him? Oh, sure. sure. That's right. Absolutely. Sure they would have. The disciples. Yeah. I think if they all got honest in other words, every single one of them in the words need to go apologize to one another. Right. Now somewhere along the line the idea they kept staying together and that was a good thing, if you will. Um, and that's this is my point, the idea of the sorrow of this world worked at death, and that's what happened. It went from a godly sorrow to a worldly sorrow, and it ended up in death. Yeah. So we see what we'll we see what we're talking about here. Yeah. Now, verse number 11 is where we're going to spend some time at, if you will. For behold, this self-same thing that you sorrowed after a godly sword. Now, who is this in verse number 11? We're talking about the Corinthian church. Right. It says that, 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 they, that they sorrowed after a God. godly sword. That means the words that church rose up. This is the, this is the interesting part of it. This church ended up rising up and coming against, if you will, in other words, this situation and possibly in other words no telling what else mm -hmm. in other words the idea that the words that they that they did this thing rightfully and properly are saw if you will in seven things that we're going to take a look at in other words a little bit in other words uh, like next time we get together like next week for behold this self same thing that you sorrowed after a godly sword what carefulness it wrought in you yeah he said what clearing of yourselves what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, he said, what revenge. Sevenfold, if you will, repentance, which is, of course, the idea of complete repentance. It's good. It's hard to finish. Let's pray. Father, we're gracious now, Lord, that you just touch lives and these that heard this word today. Pray, Father, right now, that, Lord, you do help us to do something with what it is we heard today. Pray, Father, right now that, Lord, they would strengthen, Lord, to the brethren. I pray that, Lord, we realize some things it is that are needful and necessary in our lives and in our church body, if you will, and how they do my work with, do with, and deal with, in other words, individuals. And ask in Jesus' first name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Back in 15 minutes. We've got 15 minutes. We'll be right back again live, if you will, 11 o'clock.